We begin today with Flavor Flav running in and waking everyone up bright and early at 7 a.m. Sweetie is the only one who actually wakes up and I'll reveal my bias right now, Sweetie is my favorite. Hoops wants to talk to him, really let him know how she feels. Flav gets New York to get the paper out of her butt, but she denies that for some reason. Sweetie has concerns. She denied letting Flav pressure her into smashing on the first date last night. She says she doesn't move that fast and Mr. Flavor says, Said, that's nice but don't move that slow either sweetie reveals that being real is overrated and it's time to start being fake all the girls are lined up on the stairs and hottie is dressed like bessie coleman flavor reveals his mother is here to meet these eight random women he met last week if there's one thing to know about mother flav it's that she's a good god-fearing christian woman the one thing she hates more than anything is being late to church Flavor tells the girls they got 30 minutes. They scramble like church mice looking for conservative clothing. Hottie decides to come down dressed like Little Red Riding Hood. They arrive to church and I'm shocked his mom is letting him do all these extras at church, but I guess black church is a place you could show up in a coke white suit like this. I'm still not sure about the clock though. Goldie and Smile start crying. They got the Holy Ghost. New York is being a heathen. Church is giving her a headache. Not good Christian. After church, Flave drops the ladies and his mother off at a tea room. She's gonna interrogate everyone to see who's good enough for Flav. She loves Goldie, everyone loves Goldie. Hoops is smiling too hard at her, so I can't tell if the mom likes her. Sweetie tries to tell her about herself and Miss Flav just really wants this biscuit. Hottie apparently has an Ivy League law degree. She lists off her entire resume and it's pretty impressive. She doesn't even smoke, drink, or use curse words along with all the charity work. She is cooking everyone. New York doesn't like that shit. She kicks Red Oyster off the line just so she can go over and hate. She tells Flavor's mother that she loves him. The mom makes the exact same face to everyone, so honestly, I don't know what she's thinking at this point. Back at the house, she talks about how much she loves Hottie. Flavor is going to rub her more later. The mom continues to make the same faces. There's something about hoops she hasn't connected yet, whatever that means. She hates Sweetie because she kept talking over her trying to eat. She gave the Flav exactly what he needed. He thanks her for the help. Now, Double F decides to go on a date with all eight of these girls for one hour from seven at night to four in the damn morning. That sounds like the worst night. I definitely fall asleep on like the fourth easy. Let's do this from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. when everybody's awake. Hoops is up first. FF is clearly confused and he's gonna try to put his finger on it. He hopes she lets him put his finger on it. Goldie is up next and Flavel has changed his outfit. He calls her a country bumpkin. Time for next date. Hottie's next. He likes her breasts. That's about all. Um, who's next? New York is next and he gives her the big piece of chicken and she says he has a lot of big meat waiting for her. Okay. Red Oyster is up to bat and Flav has been consuming Andre champagne and fried chicken for the last five hours. So he knocks the hell out. He's snoring on her like a old school Chevy exhaust. I tried to tell y'all, but he did make it five hours. So that's longer than I would have. And that's probably why he's the greatest hype man of all time. Sweetie is next and Flav is awake now. So that's not really fair to Red Oyster. Sweetie starts riding Flavor because he told her that she needs to give up the cakes but now he's mad. I really don't understand what this dude wants. Flav goes upstairs to get smiles for the last date and she's knocked out so he takes his ass to bed. I feel like the whole doing this at night thing was cool for the shots, but dumb as hell. Right at that moment, Flav hears a knock at the door. It's Hoops and Pumpkin here to sleep in bed with Flavel. At that moment, you hear New York's theme song and she comes down the entry ramp with a cigarette in hand and she busts in this bitch smoking hella heavy while everyone's trying to sleep, which is the funniest scene of the whole season. She even sits in the corner at a point and just judges everyone while they're sleeping. She then scoots up right next to the cuddle puddle and they're gonna sleep with all these lights and camera flash on them. Flavor wakes up and reveals he was only 80 seconds of a centimeter away from having this room smelling like game day basketball. Instead, he invites everyone down to the pool to get to know them a little better. Flavor reveals his ideal woman is a 94, 67, 87, 
seven, which God damn, I'm not about to sit here and body shame nobody, but his ideal woman is literally just one of them old school big back televisions. Hadi reveals her measurements and she's a 34 double D all natural 26 36 everyone starts roasting her because they think she's lying red oyster says that she's a 26 so ain't no damn way only 26 on her is her neck this is funny and everything but they end up pulling out a metric tape at the reunion trying to embarrass hottie and she really wasn't lying these are her actual measurements so these jokes really don't hit the same now that i have that dollar flavor tells everyone that they're having a fried chicken cooking contest and the winner gets a date with Flav and his mom they walk in and Big Rick has decided to pull out the entire pantry, all types of unnecessary shit. Salsa, marshmallows, I think that's applesauce, crispy rice? Sweet Baby Ray's, is that jelly? Who the hell uses jelly on chicken? They have 30 minutes to break down a chicken and fry it, which is definitely possible as long as they start heating up that oil quick, because it's gonna take a little bit. They got cast irons, gonna take a little bit to get that oil hot honestly they should have started this yesterday throw that chicken in some buttermilk or some you know what i mean let that sit overnight you're gonna have that perfect texture sweetie talks about how she got attacked by a chicken when she was a kid and now she has a phobia which i'm not gonna crack jokes on because i got bit by a horse when i was eight and i ain't never seen sea biscuits so how could i talk hottie asks if she could have it catered which how are they gonna take the order and deliver it in 30 minutes so no duh goldie starts off heating up that cast iron so she She's giving me a little bit of confidence and she's southern so confidence hoops cuts the chicken right at the joint in the thigh so she can separate the drumstick you see that how she uses the weight of the drumstick and the knife to peel it back that's how i know that she knows what she's doing then we see smiley here just contaminating everything in the area they're gonna need to call a professional cleaner to remove all the salmonella the way that these girls are just flinging around all this raw ass chicken carelessly. Pumpkin's never seen giblets before and then she starts trying to dislocate the chicken's shoulder. What the hell is wrong with her? Sweetie's over here crying while cutting the chicken and wipes her eyes with the hand she was touching chicken. Red Oyster is tenderizing the chicken or rubbing the seasoning in. She might have a little bit of idea what she's doing. Big Rick walks up to Hoops and asks if he can get some of that chicken and I'm with him. She do look like she used some cornflakes for the crust. I have mixed experiences with that, but from Hoops, I would love them damn cornflakes. This, this pan of chicken right here, I, I can't even explain this. What is going on? It's like one of those pictures where everything is clearly something, but you just can't make anything out. Hoops finishes a cool 10 minutes early and she just goes outside and kicks it. Finally, it's Heidi's time and she knows that her chicken is going to be the best. She was raised vegetarian, whatever that has to do with this. She decides to just throw on all the ingredients I said were random as hell earlier and who the hell uses jelly on chicken or whatever dumb shit I was talking about earlier. She proves my ass wrong. Then she throws an entire chicken directly into the microwave like dog. Plus time has already elapsed from the 30 minutes. So you about to try microwaving a whole chicken with marshmallows and jelly in like 22 minutes? Goldie says, this bitch crazy. It's time for the taste test. Chicken one is hoops and while slightly beyond golden brown, when the skin look like elephant knees, you know it's gonna be fire. Chicken two is sweetie and all the variation in color is confusing me. I'm guessing she only rolled it in flour, didn't use any like egg and breadcrumbs or like cornflakes or whatever. Flav takes a very cosmetic bite and says it's good. Three is red oyster and I retract my vote of confidence. She spelled an F with her leftover chicken and put a heart with ketchup. So Flav is being positive when his mom is trying to choose negativity. Whoever did this must have made it with love. Four is New York and she served the entire leg with mad oranges. Five isn't even told to us, but it's hard as a rock. It's either Goldie or Smiles. And six also isn't named, so whichever one wasn't the last one, that's her. Flav used it as a gun, which doesn't explain how it tastes, but I'm gonna guess it was trash. Pumpkin is up at seven and her chicken is raw as hell. He goes and throws that hell the hell up. No way this can get worse. Big Rick reveals number eight and Hottie is ready to win because the fact she didn't fry it in all those heavy oils gives her an edge. When they pull it out, it's terrible. I mean, come on. What, am I supposed to make a joke about this? It is the joke. All right, we're just gonna have a moment of silence and let the chicken take over the channel. 
All right, enough of that. Never again. Flav asks if number eight was even serious, and she tries looking at everyone else to deflect. Number one and number two are the finalists. All of y'all were really behind the girl that was crying while she was making the food. Embarrassing effort by three through eight. Hoops wins, obviously, and she's gonna go on a date with Flav and his mom. On the date, Flav's mom is still doing the same face the entire time. Up until Hoops tells her that she builds and renovates houses, so that's when the mom smiles for the very first time this episode. Flav is being disgusting, go figure. It's time for eliminations. Obviously, Hottie is going home, right? She just served a raw ass chicken to your mom. First clock up is Pumpkin, who better thank Hottie, cause if she didn't do what she did, Pumpkin was definitely getting her ass kicked out. Red Oyster is next, she knows what time it is. The third clock goes to Hoops, who had to wait behind the second and third worst play. New York is next, Pumpkin is hating, which is basically all she does the entire show. Goldie is up to the plate, or clock, so to speak. Now, there's only two clocks left, but this one is for Smiley. One clock left, yo, Sweetie and Hottie, the easiest choice ever. The one who made the second best chicken, and the one who spread salmonella all over the space. Plus, Sweetie is my personal favorite, so that must mean something. Yo, Hottie, come get this. Excuse me, what the hell did he just say? He then explains how you can't serve his mom a raw chicken and picks her regardless. Sweetie then curses Flavor the Flav out. I'm glad she did, cause I want to. She then starts stating mad facts and Flav hates that, so he sends her the flavor out of here. He says that the way she left was whack, but he looks forward, not back. Sweetie finds the nearest confession cam and starts going the flavor off on Flav. 